Welcome to Expert Profiles Atlanta, where Atlanta's influencers and innovators share strategies for overcoming obstacles and achieving success in business and life. Here's your host, best-selling author and Atlanta influencer, Neil Howe. Hello and welcome to the show. This is your host, Neil Howe, and today my special guest is Jeff Yon. He is the CEO and founder of Dynamics, and he helps great businesses connect with their audience in a meaningful, exciting, and compelling way online. Now, Jeff founded Dynamics in 2005 as a college sophomore, and since that time, the company has grown to become one of the most recognized and awarded website development companies in the world, with a client list that includes well-known national, international, and local brands. Uh, Jeff has a passion for digital storytelling, as well as for pushing the envelope of what can be achieved through technology. Uh, Jeff has also started six companies, and he has contributed his message to Inc. Magazine and Forbes and Huffington Post, as well as many others. And his businesses have been featured in the national media, including Fast Company, Adweek, Huffington Post, The Wall Street Journal, and many more. Now, Jeff is a member of the Berry College Board of Visitors, as well as Kennesaw State University's Executive Advisory Board for the Robin and Doug Shore Entrepreneurship Center. Very excited to have Jeff on the show with us today. Welcome, Jeff Yon. Thanks so much for having me. Excited to be here. Well, tell us a little bit about your background, because you started in business very early, Jeff, and uh, to have started and launched six companies is quite an achievement. So tell us how you got started in the entrepreneurship. Yeah, so uh, I started my first uh, kind of quote unquote business at 14, setting up networks and infrastructure for small businesses. And uh, that was that was fun, but it was also just about as embarrassing as you can imagine, because uh, at 14 in 1998, 99, there were no cell phones for kids. So they would call my parents' house, say, hey, uh, Tim from State Farm here, can I talk to Jeff? My mom says, hey, Jeff, State Farm's on the phone. And I go, oh, great. <laughs> and uh, then I, I hop on the phone and, and they say, uh, hey, can you set up this, this new office for us? And I go, yeah, sure, I can do that what time can you come pick me up? Wow. And so, you know, I didn't do that for, for too terribly long just because it's, uh, it's kind of a, a, a weird thing for, you know, I consider myself a, a recovering introvert and it's uh, an intimidating thing to be 14, not be able to, to drive and, you know, kind of be in these, these places. And so uh, went from that to creating a position on the IT staff at my high school. And then, uh, Jumped into to college, sophomore year. I wanted an alarm system for my car and had no money, which is pretty, pretty typical for a sophomore in college. And so I looked at what a, uh, what a poor kid could get, uh, could give to a local car audio video shop in exchange for an alarm system. And their website was pretty bad. This was 2005, so everyone's site was pretty bad. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I spent three months, taught myself how to design and code, built a new website, put on a dress shirt and just showed up and, and uh, sold them a new website. So that's how, it's, how it got started. Wow, that is tremendous. And, you know, that's a great lesson for any youngster uh, that is really looking to figure out what they want to do is, you know, just have an idea and go for it. Now, what kind of skills did you have and where did that come from at 14 to be able to help uh, State Farm out with their technical problems? <laughs> so uh, I, I was lucky enough that at about five or six years old, we had a Macintosh Plus, And so I was able to kind of learn computers in early age. And then uh, by about nine, yeah, I think it was nine. My dad and I built our first computer together and I was just hooked from there. And so I, I built as many computers as I could afford to build. And then it sort of dawned on me that if I build computers for other people, they'll pay for the parts that I need to build it. And the building was the fun part for me. And so I just started 
talking to my friends' parents, I mean, my parents' friends and, and um, you know, just kind of going through that process to track down people who needed a computer. I could build them for less than Dell at the time. And I didn't care if I made any money on it. It was a chance to play. Right. And that's, uh, you know, another important lesson is finding that passion. And obviously yep. that passion that you have for computers uh, still impacts the, everything that you do today. So let's get yep. to the people that you help now, Jeff. What kind of uh, business is Dynamics and who is your ideal client? Who do you uh, like to help the most? Great question. Uh, really for us, it comes down to companies that have a purpose and are trying to do the best thing for their clients. So we work a lot in B2B. We also work a lot with B2C. Uh, we don't do heavy e-commerce, so no Amazon type, type projects. But short of that, we really look for opportunities to, to tell a great story. And so companies that are doing right by their customers and uh, really have, have something going for them, we look for ways to create an experience that's going to bring that out and set them apart from the other people in their space. So that ethical part of companies that are doing you know, the right thing is extremely important that you want to align with them. But yep. you know they have to be doing you know something special or to be able to at least get that message out. Uh, what problems do you you see that these companies have, and why do they come to you for help? Yeah, so so your question about ethics is really at the core of of us. You know, I'm I'm a firm believer life's too short to both do work you're not proud of or to help people who aren't good be more successful. Mm. I mean, my logo is, is on the sites of the clients that we build. And I don't want to, to have my name tied into someone who is not doing right by their customer. Uh, but as it relates to the actual, um, the actual thing that they do, it doesn't really matter too much. In fact, we, we love opportunities where people think that there's no way to tell a unique story. So I'll give you an example of that is uh, Zero Res. You probably know the name Zero Res, yes. carpet cleaning company. Very popular in Atlanta, at least. Yeah, and they're amazing. And they've got uh, better technology than the other guys out there. And they're scrappy, and they want to do the right thing, and they're making customers really happy. And so the challenge we had was make carpet cleaning interesting. And... If you step back and think about that, that's a really cool challenge because carpet cleaning is not a thing that you ever consider to be interesting. It's mm -hmm. something that you think of as, as an annoying necessity. My carpets look nasty. I need to get someone out here. It's an expense. It's not something anyone looks forward to or is excited by. And so we were able to sit back and say, how do we tell this story in a way that's really going to engage that person and take them from a passive observer into an active participant. And so what we did is we made it so as you scroll down that homepage, it actually starts cleaning the carpet in front of you. And it brings out points one by one that psychologically are what you need to know in order to, to decide that this is a good company to work, you know, to work with and, and solve your needs. Mm. That is great. I haven't been to uh, Zero Resi's uh, website recently, but I'm definitely going to have to go check that out now to see uh, that um, story unfold in action. Now yeah. we're talking we're talking about carpet cleaning here, and ultimately, what I want you to explain, Jeff, is carpet cleaning is like a commodity. Yep. Uh, business to where you know there's hundreds of carpet cleaners out there they all do a, a relatively decent job of, of cleaning the carpets mm -hmm. how does one like zero res get established over all these other ones and why is that story so important i think it's it's about energy and scrappiness so you know it's it's easy to have a generic carpet cleaning company and it's easy to rest on a you know 50 year reputation and and kind of stay the way that you are but what i looked for and what we found in in the zero res team is a group of people who want to do it better and they want to tell a story and they want to 
to go beyond the, I'm going to show up, you're going to be annoyed that you have to spend money, you're going to get it done, and then you're going to be annoyed in two months that you have to get it done again, and really transition from that into a mindset of we're going to hyper-serve customers, we're going to do a great job for them, and we're going to make sure that they leave as evangelists. And those guys checked off those boxes for us. And so it was, it's really energizing to be able to put our creativity to bear for someone like that who is trying to, to push the envelope in a space that you consider a commodity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. So do you see this uh, same problem amongst uh, all the businesses that you deal with? Yeah, everyone has to tell a story. And everyone is good at and not so good at a lot of different things. And so, you know, just as an example, we have um, air conditioning, plumbing companies, you know, in, in Atlanta, we've done a lot of companies in that space. But if you go look at each of these websites, they're all very different. They all have unique messaging and stories to them. One guy might really be passionate about the, the power of tankless water heaters. And so we'll emphasize that and explain the benefits of it and when it's a fit. And then someone else might be interested in a service program. That means that you never have to worry about your system breaking down. And so we'll, we'll pull out the, uh, the, uh, the story there and help that messaging to, to come to life and make it really easy. Because uh, I don't even remember anymore who, who said this, but I learned it in college that uh, your brain is a cognitive miser. It does everything it can not to process uh, because there's just too much in the world to process. If it had to process everything, you, you'd run out of energy. And so our job is to, to make it so simple and so engaging that you process it almost without realizing you're processing it. You get actively interested in it. And the benefit of that to these companies is you can have 10 different HVAC companies that are all clients. And they all have a different story. And you, you might on the surface go, gosh, you know, how can you, how can you get 10 different companies in the same space to feel different? But you think about every business you've ever worked with. They're great at a couple things. They're okay at several things. And then there's a lot of things that they either don't enjoy or they don't do a great job with. And so our job is to help the people, uh, you know, help help connect people with the type of business that resonates with their need and the type of business that that company knows they can do better than anybody else. Mm. So th this is uh, a, a fairly lengthy process, not only to actually do all the design and g get all the coding to make the website function properly, but you really have to sit down with that customer or client that you are are serving and really mm -hmm. get them to understand their brand story. Do yep. you find that they have that kind of clarity or is that something that you really are able to help them with? Some do, uh, but you know, one of the really cool things that the sort of un unexpected output from a client perspective of going through the process is they leave with a much greater level of clarity about what they enjoy and what they do well and the areas that maybe they, they should de-emphasize in their business. And so we, we'll do a four-week, what we call pre-development process. And that process covers, you know, customer journey, uh, who the customers are. You know, every business has five or six distinct audiences. Let's talk through what each of those cares about and are you serving them now? And if you are, could it be better? What's this and what's that? So we go through this whole process and by the end of it, we know them as well as they know them. And they've gained a lot of insight that was sort of an intangible benefit of going through that process. And then all of that is brought to life within the website over the course of, you know, about three or four months of development. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a very big fan of Simon Sinek's uh, book, Start With Why. Yep. Uh, you know, th th that should be the central question that all these companies have. But I think most of the companies that I see out there are basically trying to just tell people what they do. Can yep. you tell me the difference why the why question is more important to get that kind of story out 
rather than you know what it is that you do as an example carpet cleaning what an awesome question so and you know think about especially when you're talking about a commodity you know the the every every box of cereal is the same i'm i'm going to reference a book that i don't think anyone will recognize except me but it's from a a pretty famous guy in seth godin i'm sure you know the name right uh in, in high school, I won a contest that got me a book called Free Prize Inside, and it came in a cereal box. And this book had a very short and simple premise, which was that as a kid, you walked down the cereal aisle and you bought that cereal based not on the merit of the cereal itself, but the free prize that came in the box. Of course. Because the cereal was all basically the same. It was that Fred Flintstone toy that you were like, oh man, I've got to have this. Mm. And, and the why side of it is really that. So you've got 10 companies that are all doing the same thing. Well, who are you going to want to work with? The one that really resonates with your passions and has a personality to them and is doing something because they love it or because they're making an impact somewhere, not just because they're getting a paycheck out of it. A great example is uh, Superior Plumbing has their their kids club and they will uh, send special needs students to baseball games and give them an experience of a lifetime and you know it's just so cool to be able to to be involved with someone who is passionate about making a difference in people's lives like that and as a as an actual customer you look at it and say i could give my money to person x over here or I could give it to these guys. And I know if I give it to these guys, they're going to be good stewards of that. And that is something that's really going to make the difference. Uh, I think, you know, people are going to trust that company a little bit more when they realize and understand that story. So it's very important for that story to be told. Now, Jeff, what are some of the misconceptions people have about, you know, this whole process? They, They come to you, uh, looking for a website redesign and they end up, you know, having, you know, after going through the consultation with you, uh, you know, maybe with a completely different idea. What popular misconceptions do you generally see through this process? Uh, I think a lot of it boils down to people assume that pretty is is the the definition of success. So they'll run through some sites and in their mind, they'll find something pretty and they'll say, my site no longer looks pretty. So our, in our industry, we have a saying that you grow to hate your babies. So I built something. It's amazing. I love it. Four years from now, it's like, oh, that's disgusting. I wish that we had done this and this and this and this differently because technology has changed and tastes have changed. And that moves so rapidly in our space in particular. <clears throat> and the, we have a saying uh, surrounding that, which is that pretty is pointless. The, a pretty site that's not designed to really tell your story and resonate with an audience isn't going to do you any favors. And it's hard to really get that until you see a pretty site and then you see an impactful site and you talk through the differences between the two of those and then it becomes very clear. And so there's a lot of education that goes on early on in, in our conversations. You know, and our, our sales are a little different than a typical company and that it's really more of an interview process. We're getting to know them and see if we really like them and we feel like we can do things for them that no one else can do and we can do it better. And we're also looking at saying, you know, is this, is this someone who's going to allow us to be creative on their behalf and tell a story or do they just want a brochure? Mm hmm. There's now, lots of brochures. Yes. Now, you as a company with Dynamics, you've been awarded so many times, thousands of awards for what you do. It's uh, you know very good to get to a stage to get that kind of recognition so that you can actually work with the people that you know are your ideal clients and the people that you want to work with rather than you know just taking any kind of business that you can yeah. i think everyone has to get to that pretty quickly as a as a business or they'll they'll it'll fall apart because you you hit too many times where you know that this isn't the best client but you took them on 
and they don't have the best outcome and that repeats several times and you start to go, maybe I'm not that good at this or maybe this isn't right or you know, what, what's going wrong here. And so the companies I've seen that have been amazing are amazing because they know who they can really help and they focus on them and they know who they can't help and they help them find another place. Right. And that's great advice. So, you know, what would you say to a company that might be in that situation where they're, you know, just struggling to get uh, a customer, maybe their brand story isn't clear? What's the first thing that they should do? I think you look back on your customers and you do sort of a postmortem on the last 50 or however many it takes to get a really strong understanding of where you felt the passion, where you were able to really help someone, where you did more than you were able to do for others, and put together sort of a a customer profile centered around that. And then put your time and your energy towards those guys. And then you can showcase, here's what I was able to do to make these guys more successful. Here's how I helped this company. Here's how I helped that company. And, you know, you'll, you'll start to build a portfolio out from there Um, But if you just keep taking on everything that comes in, pretty soon you're going to get burned out. Mm. So going through this process, uh, you know, like I said, people might come to you for a website design and then, you know, you share with them what uh, you can do for them. Uh, Do you see any fears or things that might be holding them back from taking that step to continue and follow through with this? Yeah, you know, there's, there are companies that they think that they know exactly who they are and have it all figured out and don't want to want to to dive deeply into it. Either they don't want to let us in or they are afraid that if their secret sauce is exposed (laughs) to the public that other competitors will copy and that type of thing. And we have a hard time helping that type of, of customer because they need to be you know, they need to wear that on their sleeve. It needs to be a, a badge of honor to them that we are this. And if they try to, to conceal that and make it a secret sauce, I've just never seen that be successful. No, uh, it's definitely a lot better when uh, companies or individuals are open about what they do and uh, how they are helping their clients. So, yep. Jeff, you've been doing this for uh, quite some time now. and 13 years. 13 years. Um, is there any one or two companies or stories that really stand out uh, that you'd like to share with our audience? In terms of, of projects that we've but, done? Uh, yes, uh, projects, you know, what kind of uh, position were the company in before they came to you? You know, sure. what were we able to do for them? And ultimately, we were talking about the outcome. What did it do for the company? Yep. Well, uh, you know, kind of being, being a nerd here and, uh, and liking pretty animations and things, one that comes to mind right away is uh, Guardian Centers was a really cool project that is a a firmly b2b slash government type of of build but uh, the challenge they brought us was really unique they said army generals are who decide who's going to come here and do you think a general is going to get on a plane and fly down to perry georgia in order to see our facility i said yeah probably not (laughs) they said but if they come here they will work with us because our facility is second to none. <clears throat> How do we bring the facility to the general so the general doesn't have to come to the facility? And so that was just a ton of fun because we started with their six personas. You know, they, they serve a pretty wide audience. So that could be a hazmat team. That could be the, you know, New York Fire Department. That could be the, the police department down the road. It could be the Navy SEALs, you know, a big, a big, broad range of the best of the best. And so we have that up at the top. And if you already know, you just click on that and you dive right in. The whole site's tailored to you. If you don't know or if you're not ready for that yet, you scroll down just a little bit further. And we built this 3D interactive map that showcases visually all the things that they have that other people don't. Like they have a Hurricane Katrina simulator, you push a button and it starts to flood a zone 
with uh, with buildings so that you can can practice saving people in a flood scenario. They've got demolished buildings, all this stuff. And so we put that together and it made it so much easier for their team to get these potential people excited about the space because they could see right away what set it apart from someone else, which they wouldn't have been able to do with a brochure type of experience. Right. And that's, you know, just uh, <coughs> coming to life through uh, the internet and through that story is uh, definitely makes a, a huge impact. Uh, yep. Jeff, uh, thinking back, uh, tell me a lesson that you learned early on in your business and career uh, that still impacts how you do business today. You know, I think the uh, the one about working with great companies is probably the best one. So starting out in college, you know, by senior year, I had a full-time person. I was working 18 hours of classes, and I had a two-hour daily commute. And we were just taking on every project that came to us because we we just didn't know what we were good at yet. And we needed to have enough money to be able to, to keep him employed and keep it going. And, um, you know, we're trying to build these sort of red flags in our minds of where we see someone not being a fit or when we know something is going to derail down the road. And we had this one particular person that... Uh, we were just about ready to launch his website. And he said, hey, what about that second site you guys were going to build? And I said, I don't, you know, we never talked about a second site. And he said, oh, yeah, sure we did. Uh, you know, we, we, we talked about this. And I said, well, we have a, a signed contract that says we're building this one site. And he said, yeah, I know all that. But see, the way I see it is you're a poor college kid and I could sue you. So wouldn't you rather build me a second site for free? then deal with me putting you out of business. <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh. And that really lit a fire under me to make sure that we only do business with really ethical people and companies. Because if he's doing that to me, he's doing the same thing to his customers. And, you know, I don't, I don't ever want my name associated with somebody like that. Right. And that is a great piece of advice again. Now, Jeff, if somebody is looking for uh, somebody to design their website, they're looking for a website designer, what kind of questions should they be asking to make sure that they're finding somebody like yourself who is ethical and is going to do the right thing? Well, I think you, you have to, to first figure out what you want. So for some companies, a brochure where type of site is fine. You know, if you don't have anything really exciting to say and you just want a presence, then it's a different story than if you really want to, to be able to engage your audience. And so I think first figuring out who you want to be. And then from there, look at, at the technology and see what they've actually created themselves that, uh, you know, wasn't just a template site. Because the, the, the state of our industry has kind of been that, the, the little guy that builds a site in WordPress and, you know, throws a few things together, some plugins and templates, they're kind of disappearing in favor of the Wixes and, and other software platforms that you can build yourself. And so you're, you're landing on companies that should have higher capabilities at this point. And so you have to decide, am I going to do it myself and understand that it's going to be a, a basic brochure experience where I'm going to spend money for someone, in which case I expect to transcend that experience and get something that's really going to, going to be impactful. Very good. Now, if somebody is uh, in the Atlanta area, but I'm sure you do business all over the country and all over we the do. world. Uh, so somebody from anywhere that is listening to this, what is the best way for them to get in touch with you, Jeff, if they want your expertise and looking at their business? Yeah, just uh, Google Dynamics, D-Y-N-A-M-I-X, and we'll be the first result. Or uh, if you search for my name, which is Jeff, and the last name is uh, J-A-H-N, which you would never get from the pronunciation yawn, um, you'll be able to find us really easily. Well, Jeff Yon, he is the CEO and founder of Dynamics, as well as uh, many other companies that he has been working at since he's 
been 14 years old, a lifetime entrepreneur. Uh, I have really enjoyed this conversation and uh, thank you for being my guest on Expert Profiles today. Likewise. Thanks so much for having me. And to our listening audience, if you like what you hear, hit that like button and share and we'll see you next time on the show. Thank you for listening to Expert Profiles Atlanta with Neil Howe. To learn more about the resources in the show or to listen to past episodes, visit expertprofilesatlanta.com.